all it's different. So anyway, uh, so welcome and uh, thanks for with the idea of Zoom. We'll, we'll give this a try and see how it works. Maybe it'll work better than Facebook Live. Yes. So um, anyway, uh, I'm Anthony Stewart and um, director of Center for Aromatherapy Research and Education. And this is uh, this is our what we usually do is Facebook Live. And uh, my special guest tonight is Paul Bauer. And he's in Arlington Heights, Illinois, uh, for the time anyway, right? And so I, a um, little bit about Paul here. Paul is the founder of dreamsalive.com, which is a, a company that helps people move beyond the limits of uh, the mind and discover their innate gifts and strengths. Paul is an expert in helping people clear their subconscious blocks and emotions that hold them back. Really good uh, expertise to have there, by the way. Since 96, uh, through programs like Clear Mind, Effortless Manifesting, and Secrets of Manifesting, he helps over 20,000 people in over 60 countries transform their inner blocks into breakthroughs in their health, finances, career, and inner spirituality. He holds transformational retreats in Hawaii and Sedona that help people clear whatever stops them from living their lives with clarity, energy, and abundance. During his wife's health crisis, Paul discovered essential oils, and after that life-changing event, a whole new world of possibilities opened for him. Paul now uses essential oils in all of his programs because of their in, um, incredible ability to heal at all levels, not just physical. After using oils for several years, Paul discovered the hidden levels of the oils and their incredible powers to clear unresolved emotions and stagnant uh, chi energy. Uh, it's his passion to share these hidden levels of the oils with the world. Paul is creator of Inner Chi, a program custom designed for young living members to help them discover the deeper powers of the oils. So um, anyway, welcome, Paul, and uh, thanks for, for joining me this evening. Um, I've been using uh, the oils for uh, about 20 years now, and it's, um, of course, uh, a lot of people that are brand new learn first off uh, some of the uh, uh, you know physical attributes of the oils and how they can help their physical bodies and things, and uh, and then we start to as time goes on we start to explore some of the other things. And my favorite part, of course, being a, a care instructor, uh, which is which is care stands for Center for Aromatherapy Research and Education. Then one of the uh, classes that we teach is on emotional release. And that's actually my favorite class to teach. And um, we, we correlate in that class the link between uh, your emotions and your physical health. And so uh, many, many health issues we find, uh, if not most of our health issues, we find a, a spiritual or uh, emotional link to that. So um, if you want to, Paul, just uh, just tell us just a little bit about uh, the program that you have developed and uh, and how it's helped you. Well, before we jump to it, it's called Energy. I think the, the real cool thing, Anthony, about um, the oils is how they help raise our vibration. So our normal consciousness, whether that be you, me, or anyone else, tends to drop down to like a default level where we're not feeling good sometimes. Everyone has that issue at some level. The beauty about the oils is when you grab a bottle like this and you hold it in your hands, this is one of the things I've learned from your father, from Greg Hitter, and several other people that have become very good friends within the Young Living family, and Gary especially, is that this bottle of oil contains a field of energy. In Chinese, they call it qi, but in many other disciplines, it's just energy. So without even smelling it, I can connect with this energy and it can begin to shift my vibration to raise my consciousness. In other words, raise my awareness. So before we get to clearing emotions, before we get to even, uh, let's say, clearing my mind, this begins to shift my energy. That's where all thought begins. So even if I have a, a low vibrational thought, let's say depression or anger or regret of some kind, that, does, that emotion doesn't just create itself out of nothingness. It creates based on old memories and it creates out of stuck chi or stuck energy. And that's the origin of where I started coming up with energy because we know we're stuck. We know what the feeling is like. And the beauty of the oils is they help open up the energy. So that's just a little bit. Now we can go into more depths about what energy is. I didn't want to turn into an advertisement right away. I want to talk about, about how oils 
can access more than just the physical level, like we, you had mentioned, and then get into how energy is different in terms of how you use it to clear not just the emotions, but the underlying energy. Okay, so let me ask you this, and, and also let me let me uh, let me say I, I know, I know I've, every once in a while uh, we run into uh, folks that uh, use the oils, and they um, they get a little spooked sometimes by uh, terms that uh, that people use with the oils, and, and you you, you know mm -hmm. this uh, uh, people get spooked by terms about uh, chi chakras um, energy even. And things like that. Now, I pointed out I did a video a couple of weeks back about um, about New Age and uh, and essential oils and things because it was, a lot of people, of course, even think that uh, oils are New Age. Now, New Age is is up to definition, you know, right. person's own definition what that means. And I find a lot of people's um, concept of what's New Age is actually things that are very ancient. But um, so just to uh, just to make a comment, and you can comment on this as well. Qi being energy, it's just a, a Chinese word for energy. Yes. Is, um, is you think about Einstein's famous equation E equals mc squared, and what did the E stand for? It stood for energy. Yes. And so he equated energy with matter. And so uh, really, <clears throat> under under Einstein's um, equation, there really everything is energy. You know, this this table that's in front of me is 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 made of of energy. And uh, it's just energy taking different forms. So there's really nothing new age about chi. Uh, definitely nothing new age about uh, energy. And so we're talking when we talk about oils um, holding an energy, our body's holding an energy. And, and of course, without energy, we would not sustain life, would we? So anyway, just wanted to mention that. Okay, anything else? Two, three, four. Anthony. There we go. Yeah, I'll keep every, I'll keep everybody muted in the background. There we go. Let's see. There we go. We've got more people joining in, so that's good. You there? All yeah. right. Yes, I am good. here. All right, good. So it looks like it froze up, or can you hear me okay? Yeah. Yeah, I'm loud and clear. Okay. So. To follow up with what you're saying there, so yes, um, some people may temporarily be um, confused by terms like chi or prana or other words that mean the same thing, and that is energy. So we are energetic beings, and when our energy drops, when our consciousness drops, when our vibration drops, and vibration is just another word for energy, we begin to feel that. It's, it's really noticeable. It's very palpable. And so the question is, what do we do about that? So you can do any number of processes. You can do tapping, you can do consciousness work, you can do hundreds of different techniques. The reason why the oils work so well is because in the meantime, while we're doing these techniques, this amazing little bottle of oil can hold our vibration higher while we're doing those techniques to make those even stronger, even more effective. That's the beauty. That's why I really love the oils is because even if my mood changes, even if a client's mood changes, you'll find that within a matter of minutes, as long as they can just be open to the possibility, that's number one. Although there are exceptions. If a person's not even aware of what the oils do, if they're not even open to it, we have found in discussions and also personal experiences in our groups that people have an experience, even though they have no knowledge of the oils, they have no um, understandings of what chi or energy or anything or consciousness work, and yet they still make their breakthroughs. And that tells you something. That tells you it's an energetic change. Sure. Okay. So why, uh, Paul, are our emotions, um, why, why is it those can be indicators of whether we uh, would fail or succeed in life? Well, the phrase I love to use is like they're leading indicators. You know, like if anyone ever checks out their stocks or if they ever check out the gross domestic product or all that sort of, sorts of things in our economy, those are leading economic indicators. Our emotions are the leading indicators of what goes on inside of us. And the question I always ask people, whether we're teaching live webinars like this or in our classes of all kinds, I ask this really basic seminal question, how are you feeling right now in this moment? And the answer to that question will tell you where your vibration is. Where are you hanging out? Where is your consciousness? Where are your thoughts? 
And that's also where your intent is, believe it or not. It's a kind of a hard thing to understand at first, but somewhere deep down, we're not wanting to feel good. And it's a hard thing to face until we finally get conscious and say, wait a minute, what is it that I'm doing right here in my mind? And to get back into my body and start breathing again, start tuning in. And again, that's where the oils come in. So we're going to talk about how the oils plug into every one of these little, what would you call it, uh, examples. Because that vibration they hold is like having your own personal mentor sit at your side who's been through everything you've been through and has mastered it. It's like having your own personal coach. Okay. And some people, sure. if they stop at the aromatherapy part, not to cast any negatives on the aromatherapy side, that's fantastic. When I say the deeper energies of the oils, most of us are tapping only about 20%, maybe 30 to 40% of the oil's capacities in deep wisdom. And so the, one of my favorite phrases is, the oils will take you as far as you want to go. In other words, they'll take you as deep, they'll take you as far, they'll take you as light. They'll take you as deep into your own self-love and what love of God, what love of the cosmos, what love of pure source energy is all about. And that's hard to fathom at first for some of us because when light like that shows up, um, it's a little much to handle. And so we kind of have okay. to step down, you know, and the oils help step down that frequency of just like pure universal consciousness into something that we can understand. Oh, I can grasp what that feeling is like. I can smell it. Wow. And people are really satisfied with that. But that's only step one. Okay. So, uh, you mentioned a little bit about uh, the emotions and, uh, and smelling. So, uh, can you explain a little bit? I, I usually do explain a little bit about the emotional brain and why, what's different about, you know, uh, when we smell an oil, how that affects our emotions. What is the emotional brain and how, how are the oils affect that? Well, David did a great job describing this in, in his book called The Healing Oils of the Bible. My understanding of the amygdala and the emotional brain and what it does is when we reach that overwhelm level that we all reach at some point, either during our day or at least during our week, it's a, it's a point where you just can't handle the amount of thoughts, the amount of energy that's been building up on the inside, whether you know it or not, whether you can truly get a sense of it or not, your feelings are telling you that stuff is, is being built up. So that emotional brain has done its best. It's at its capacity when you're starting to feel overwhelmed. And after that point of overwhelm, it starts distributing it throughout the cells in the body. They also call that cellular memory. And the problem there is mm -hmm. if you've experienced a trauma, even if it's a mini trauma, let's say watching an accident that you weren't even involved in, it's still traumatic to have watched that. Or if you see someone else that you think is suffering, that's a little mini trauma. Mm -hmm. If you see a number of those things or experience them, your brain can't process all that information. So it stores it in that cellular memory. The beauty of the essential oils is that it helps open up and clear and cleanse the receptor sites on all our cells, depending on how far a person wants to go. Though. That's the one thing that I would add. It doesn't happen all at once because if a person were to become completely clear of everything, all negativity all at once, they wouldn't know who they are and they would probably shut down. So we handle as much as we can in terms of clearing and there's something else, Anthony, I wanted to share, and that is when people say, how come I didn't clear it all? I hear this all the time in our, our work, the last 20 years. How come what I did didn't work, Paul? And my answer is, to what extent did you want it to work? To what extent did you, or were you prepared for it to work? And have you ever thought that there might be a positive intent for the problem showing up in your life? Mm -hmm. That's if anyone okay. that's right now or listening to the recording, I would suggest you take a note on that one because what if the intent that we start out with when we do clearings is to get rid of something rather than to make peace with it, rather than to integrate it? And that's what I found to be the deal breaker right there in all forms of consciousness work. So that's a, that's an interesting idea there, and um, uh, I do believe that. Uh, all of our emotions serve some sort of a purpose. Even the Bible, you know, we, we think of anger as being a negative emotion. But even, uh, you know, Paul says in the Bible, he says, be angry and sin not and let not the sun go down on your anger. So in other words, he's indicating that <clears throat> anger has a place, but to um, not let it sit there overnight necessarily. And um, otherwise, it, uh, it gives lead to other things to come in there and, and wreak havoc in our lives. 
So uh, can, you, can you speak on that about the negative emotions or so-called negative emotions anyway, and how they may serve a purpose? Well, at first I'll tell you that I, I hadn't even, that didn't dawn on me in the first probably 10 years of doing personal growth work. And I just kind of did some journeying. This is probably about maybe 15, 20 years ago. And uh, I remember some work that I was studying and it suggested, what if there was a positive intent of what you're going through? And it dawned on me, it was like a light bulb turned on. And I thought, oh my goodness. It, it was a seminal shift for me, Anthony. So I journeyed inwards and I asked the part that was experiencing the challenge. So what's the positive intent? And I was pleasantly surprised that it was trying to either protect me in that case or in other situations that it was trying to to send a message through that my mind could not understand because the mind is filled with its own preconceptions. And so if we have the courage to step back and instead of just clearing the problem itself is asking for what the wisdom of the problem, why did I create this problem for myself? What's my lesson here? What's the gift in this challenge? Now you're beginning to transform the energy. You're beginning to not just neutralize the negative, but you're actually harnessing the energy of that negative polarity, so to speak. Even if you don't do polarity work, so to speak, um, there is tremendous value in discovering why you created the issue in your life, no matter what the issue might be. Now, that's, that's kind of hard or tough medicine for most of us to hear that. Why would I create my own problem? Because it's mm -hmm. not the first thing that people want to go to, right? Sure. They don't think that at first. Um, think of the worst problem you've ever had right now. Think of, the, think of a challenge you had today. And ask yourself, why did I create that for myself? It's not a fun question to, to, to ask or answer, but to ask a deeper question and say, what's the gift in this? Or if there was a gift in this, if there was something positive that my higher self, my consciousness created with purpose, what could it be? And step back and take out a journal and start writing some things down and let your mind go and let your heart speak. Now you're tapping into a deeper level. And you're letting the message come through, or at least the beginning of a message that you may not be fully aware of. Okay, so in other words, everything that we go through in life is um, it serves some purpose, and and really, it's uh, you know God is leading us through life in 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 such a way that um, it, it, everything is a life lesson, yes. whether it's and as a negative or we view it as a positive, whether we're happy about it or sad about it there is some life lesson to be learned there. And really, and, and this is one of the things we teach in emotional release is that um, basic, uh, the basic lesson to be learned from every experience is to see God in every situation, see that God was there, uh, to see the divine that is there. And what that spiritual lesson is, once we've learned it, then we move on to something else. Um, and so, um, let's see, I had, a, I had a question in mind and I just, it just slipped, it slipped me, but, uh, oh, I know, I know. So uh, also I want to mentioning about uh, transforming that negative energy, so to speak, into positive. Um, of course, we know in, in the realm of science that energy is, uh, is something that is neither lost nor destroyed. It's, uh, you know, everything in the universe, everything in this world, nothing can be lost as far as energy is concerned. It just transforms into different types of energy, so to speak, yes. uh, whether that is matter or light or heat or, you know, whatever. Yes. Everything is, it is, is just transforming into different shapes in the world and in the universe. So, um, let's see. Uh, so how can we discover the positive intent of problems and negative emotions in our lives? How, how can we discover that intent? Well, the first thing is to start out with that intent. I mean, it might sound simpler than just the words themselves, but you know, I've thought about this just, I've seen it hundreds of times with all the people that we've helped over the years, whether that be live in person or talking with them over the phone, even in large webinars. And I asked them, so what is it you really want? And almost without fail, they're not aware that they're trying to get rid of something rather than get to the other side of it to say, okay, so what do I really want? So the mind has been focused on getting rid of something. It's trying to push it away. It's trying to resist it. And that's building up a tremendous amount of negative energy on the inside. So to harness that negative energy, to make peace with it, to shift the intent um, begins a whole new process, Anthony where you begin to discover that 
number one, you realize what your intent was to start with. Like, oh my goodness, I was the one who was pushing the energy down. I was the one that was, you know, making this happen for myself. That's one of the hidden intents is that you begin to discover the God self within you. So there's a phrase that one of our teachers in the old days used to teach. And some people hear this phrase and they go, wait a minute, what's this all about? And it, this, is, this isn't meant to be irreverent for anyone who has you know, more of a Christian approach. But you play God all day long, whether you like it or not, because you're the one that's creating the thoughts. You're the one that's having the emotions. You're the one that's saying, I don't like that result. I'm going to resist it. I'm going to push it away. So to get back to your question, how do I transform that? I begin to shift my intent, first of all. What happens if I, instead of trying to push that emotion away, which is a, a normal human emotion to have or human response, what if I begin to say, I want to make peace with this feeling on the inside of me because it has been driving me crazy or at least temporarily nuts. <laughs> mm -hmm. And once that happens, now you get that shift of intent. You start feeling the difference because you go, wow, it's like letting go of this, the tug of rope. When you played that as kids, it's, uh, it's, you yeah. stop pushing against yourself like that and you let go and all of a sudden you're dancing. You're, you're letting go. Mm -hmm. And there are many forms of letting go. That's also the beauty of this because in your own level of inner mastery, there's so many levels of it. The people who first start out and say, I just want a quick fix. That's it. Just make my problem go away. You may get a temporary fix. But if your unconscious intent is to push away the problem sooner or later, what's going to happen? It will come back. Sure. It'll naturally. But if your pure intent on the inside, if your true intent is to make peace with that, that issue, that uh, emotion that was trying to come up, now that begins to transform. And there's a little homing beacon inside of all of us. It's a little secret that we all have. And that secret is, unless we resonate at the frequency of why we created that, however many years back, in other words, whenever that trauma occurred, we created that belief for a reason that the world is, and for many people, it could be unsafe. It could be, I'm not lovable. It could be that love isn't there for me. It's no matter how hard I try, it doesn't work for me. We've all run the gamut of these kinds of emotions. The real secret, so to speak, is, is to tune into, hmm, wow, this is, it's tough medicine at first, but I get under the surface of my ego. I stop thinking from here. I tap into here, you know? And one way to do that, Anthony, to answer your, your original question is to place your hand on your heart. Get back in touch with the body where 90% of our energy and our wisdom and our process truly happens. This up here cannot possibly process all the stuff that we need to. That's, when we, that's why we go into open. Okay. All right. So um, now you're talking about, uh, you know, getting on the other side of that emotion. So uh, would you say that every emotion more or less has a other side to it it's it's kind of um uh, you can experience both sides of the same coin and uh looking at it maybe like this that um, you're looking at a mountain and um you want to get to the other side of that mountain but at first it's going to be an uphill you're going to have an uphill walk up that mountain mm -hmm. uh, and then the other side is going to be downhill and more more enjoyable and uh, easier to go. It's the same mountain. It's just two different sides of it, yes. and uh, it's going to be an uphill struggle in the beginning. And so, so would you say it's the same with uh, the obstacles that we face in life? It it, it seems so um, you know so difficult and so hard and so burdensome. And, and uh, when when we're facing these struggles, but once we get to the other side of that, we can experience uh, maybe some peace and joy and some uh, triumph and victory. And uh, is is that I mean, I don't mean to put words in your mouth, but is that kind of what, uh, what you'd say uh, it is with our emotions and our struggles? Well, let's use that analogy just for a moment. So I agree with you that um, some of the, the challenges seem like they're uphill. And we may be looking to get to the other side because the other side represents the good stuff. You know? So who, who here on this planet doesn't want to have the good stuff unless they're really, really in, in bad shape and they're unconsciously beating themselves up on the inside? And that's a whole nother story. So instead of looking at it as a this side and the other side, what happens if the two sides exist simultaneously? And if we can harness the toughness of the journey going up by taking stops along the way and looking back to the valley and saying, oh my God, what a view. Or look at how beautiful this, this 
plant is right in front of me, or I'm looking out or, or in a different way I've never seen before. That's what life's teaching us. Instead of it being felt like opposition or obstacles, we can look at the challenge and saying, what positive thing is happening right in front of me that I don't have to set my eyes on the destination somewhere out there because then I'm not in the now, I'm not in the present moment. I'm actually creating more resistance by saying I want that other thing out there that happens to me on a frequent basis. And so my little lesson on the inside is to step back and say, okay, how can I stay here and now? How can I get back here into, the, into this present moment? And again, that's where these oils come in because the, these are all about living in the present moment. You can't, <laughs> think of it this way, everyone. You can't smell this oil unless you're in the present moment. And I mean fully. Well, you can catch an aroma of it. You'll go, oh, frankincense smells really good. What if you really open up a bottle? Mm. And you got this feeling of being in Oman. At the base of the hills where these trees grow or out by the ocean. Right. Um, so I'm getting a little meeting. It says it's, I guess it's 10 minutes left. Um, so um, instead of thinking that there's something uh, on the other side, it can be, how can I bring that here now to enjoy the journey along the way? Right. So experiencing the side, all, the whole mountain all at once, um, rather right. than... Yep. Looking, to the, looking to future time when, when life will be peachy. I think we all do that from time to time with our finances, with our relationships and yes. things. We're always looking for something in the future rather than being thankful for what we have right now and experiencing that, which will lead perhaps, you know, when we enjoy, I, I find when we enjoy, when we are thankful, you know, when we give thanks and we have a thankful heart for what we already have, um, then that leads to more abundance. Jesus demonstrated that. You know, what did he do when he fed 5,000 people with the loaves and the fishes? Uh, you know, he gave thanks to God. And, uh, you know, I think that was a demonstration of how thankfulness works with, um, with things of life as well. So anyway, now I haven't much time left here on Zoom. Um, Paul, if you could just maybe share uh, a, a little bit of the meat and potatoes about what, what, is, what would be the next step for somebody that wants to use the oils uh, in the energy program and uh, in, in removing blocks and, and things in their life. Well, I'll get in that in, in two seconds, but I just wanted to... I completely agree with what you just said because gratitude is the antidote and it's the hardest thing to do when you're in the middle of a problem. So how can you see yeah. that that upward climb is, is really the gift because that's where you learn the most about yourself. And if we can be grateful, if we can open our hearts to ourselves, which in that moment is probably the greatest challenge for us to do. We've all had our own experiences of that. Then you begin to transform. Then you begin to live in the now. And that's when things that would otherwise have completely stayed hidden, begin to reveal themselves, and you find the gift and the, in, um, and the blessing in the very challenge that used to bug the you-know-what out of you. So I completely agree with what you just said about gratitude. So shifting to Great. energy. Um, I created energy because it was incredibly difficult for me to find the right oils in the right moment and try to find, you know, what, what chi points do I apply it on? Because I'm really into to Chinese medicine and things like that, and I wanted to be very specific about it. So I created it because it just made it easier for me to find the right oils. And then it let me get deeper so I could be present. And that's the real key. I didn't want to just use an oil to get rid of the issue. I thought, I want to process this feeling. I want to make sense of it. I want to ask, what is your, what is your message to me? So what energy does, is it helps you not just clear an emotion, but it helps you tap into the feelings and the energy and the messages within that emotion. And then I don't talk about this very often, but the next part of it is there's a section called Optimize My Chi, and it helps you find what are called harmonizing oils. And those harmonize, harmonizing oils are different for every person. And it's something that I haven't really talked about lately because I wanted to focus on emotions and stuff like that. I think we've kind of touched base on that, um, at, at least with some respect tonight. So the harmonizing oils help you not just, here, let me step back. Once you're clear, and once you've used a clearing oil, and that's part of what energy helps you do, it brought your vibration, let's say, back up to normal. But your, the rest of your capacity is at least this high. So it's off the screen. That's where your capacity lies. So harmonizing oils help expand your energy, your consciousness, your ability to tap into your heart. In other words, your center, your core, the, the very fiber of your being. For most people, they're really happy 
We're just clearing the negative emotions, so to speak. But other people say, I want more. I know there's more within me. I don't know what it is, but I know it's there. And there's that little homie beacon that we all have on the inside. So energy doesn't just make it easier to process emotions. It takes you deeper into what I call the deeper levels of the oils. And there's seven levels without going to all seven levels tonight, because we only have about five minutes left. The essence is the, the beauty of who you are on the inside. Um, every once in a while, when you meet a, a, a mentor, a teacher, a friend, or someone who loves you unconditionally, you find something in you you didn't know was there. You tap into something that you didn't know was there. And all of a sudden, something is revealed to you. But it cannot be revealed to you unless it was yours to begin with. And that's part of what energy helps you do. It's an inward journey. It doesn't teach you more beliefs. It doesn't teach you more stuff that you need to know. How do you list it? You know, here's the 10 ways to get more or do more or be more. No, that's, that's up here in the mind. So in essence, what energy does is it helps you return to your core, to your center, to your heart, and to the essence of your being. Wonderful. Okay. So, um, all right. Well, how much time do we have? have left we have any four minutes four minutes okay so um just enough time to run up the, uh, the next yeah let's go ahead and wrap it up but and now you're going to be posting i think uh, on uh, and we'll, we've got this posted this, this link on facebook i guess people will be able to go back and see the recording here yes. and um and we'll, we'll post on there you're going to post something uh with a link so that people can try out the um, inner chi on on your website Yes. And uh, see, it's dreamsalive.com. Is that right? No, it's actually a different. Link, but it, rather than trying to describe it um, verbally, the link that appears with this video that's that will take them there. And so I've created a 14 day okay. trial now. It's a free 14 day trial. And that was stimulated by a few folks who did some interviews with me just a couple months ago. And they said, Paul, what about a free trial, dude? And I thought, you know what? It's about time. And now people are being able to, to try it out that never otherwise could have or maybe wouldn't have been as drawn to it. Now you can experience the beauty of what energy can do with the oils you already have to discover a whole new level, to tap into these deeper levels that most of us just aren't aware of. And when you begin to start experiencing that, you see a whole new world within you, within you and, and outside. So what I liked about, uh, and I haven't gone through everything on your website yet, but what I did like about it was that it's very specific. It's very personal to you as far as you can uh, put in there what it is that you're feeling um, and then even sub feelings to that feeling. And, and then it will, it will guide you to the correct oil. It'll guide you to where to uh, place that oil on your body and things. And, um, and so it's very specific. Uh, and, and I think that's what a lot of people are, are wanting sometimes is spe specificity. Uh, is that a word? And so yes. they want that, uh, those specifics there uh, so that they can go through these processes of clearing and stuff. Um, yes. So anyway, uh, it sounds like we're about out of time, but you go ahead if you just want to wrap it up and, and we'll, we'll call it well, a night. In essence, I had mentioned it, I just kind of dropped the seed before. It's like having your own personal oils coach sitting at your side. It's like having your favorite mentor. For those of you that ever studied Socrates, Socrates did not tell people what to believe. When people asked Socrates, Socrates, what is the secrets of the cosmos? Or how do I fix this? And how do I fix that? He would say, tune in for just a moment and ask yourself that same question. How do you feel about that? And it's the hardest question to answer at first because the mind revolves around itself. It's like its own little kingdom. But that's not where the answers come from. They come from deeper within us, in our hearts, in our center, in our core. So inner chi is like having your own heart slash oils coach sitting with you with unconditional love and presence, never judging you as this beautiful source of um, love, of course, but maybe even uh, a different kind of expression of love than most of us have ever felt in a way that you feel like, wow, is that cool? <laughs> we all deserve yeah. that at least once a day. Like, oh my God, what a cool feeling. <laughs> yeah, that in essence right. is what energy does. Okay. And there's a full training course that comes with it um, that is, it, it would take a little long to explain it, but it gives you the experience of what we're talking about. In other words, these are not just concepts. This is the vivid, palpable experience of when I wake up in the morning and I'm stuck, what oil can I use to raise my energy, to open up my mind? Um, there, there literally are no days that go by that I don't use the oils in some way, especially in the mornings to kind of wake up this, this part 
heart's already open. Sure. Your mind is saying, okay, what about yesterday? And how do I figure out the challenges? And how do I start moving forward? The very mountain thing that you talked about, it's trying to figure out how to get on the other side. We're about to, uh, the recording's about to stop. So yeah, right. thank you, Anthony. All right, well, thank you, Paul. Thank you so much for sharing your time and your, and your knowledge with us. And we will um, we'll hopefully, we'll, we'll see you again on here. So, so I'll say good night to everybody, Paul. And uh, everybody, God bless. We will see you all next time. Thank you so much, Anthony. Aloha, everyone. Okay. Bye-bye. All right. I'm going to... Okay. Thanks, Anthony. Thanks, Paul. I guess you, you can post that uh, if it needs to be reposted to the um, Facebook page. Yes. Yeah. Once it compiles, I'll send you the link to it.